Gold at record highs is no surprise to my next guest. He was one of the first people in the world to predict correctly the run-up in commodities, and now he sees gold going to $2,000 an ounce and beyond. Why? Because of the failed policies of the United States government. His accurate predictions are based on his contrarian and libertarian philosophy of observing the herd and doing the opposite. Freedom Watch caught up with money genius, free thinker, quantum fund co-founder, and author of A Gift to My Children, Jim Rogers, a short time ago. You predicted not too long ago that gold would go to $2,000 an ounce. Do you stand by that and why? Of course, George. That's a simple statement. Gold adjusted for its old high in, infl in inflation terms would be over 2000 now. The U.S. government is doing absolutely foolish things. The British government's doing foolish things. Many governments are printing money right now. And whenever you print money, people look for a refuge. Gold. And the refuge is gold. Who's buying gold now? Well, a lot of people. It's a, a lot of big names on Wall Street are buying gold. The public is buying gold to some extent, but the public is also selling gold. The problem with gold is there's not so much gold. It's not as though there are gigantic amounts of gold. There's just not that much of it. When, when the government sees that there's such lack of faith in the dollar manifested by people willing to buy gold, why doesn't it change its policies? Instead, it enacts legislation that said, you bought gold, you better tell us how much you have and where you're keeping it. Judge, do you, you really think that they're going to admit that they made mistakes? They're going to blame it on you. They're going to blame it on the press. They're going to blame it on people like me who are buying gold. They're not going to admit they make mistakes. Politicians never make mistakes. What's wrong with you? All right, what, what happens when people buy huge amounts of gold and store it in some facility? Is that the functional equivalent of putting all that cash in a shoebox under your bed? Well, it's a little better because shoebox of cash will decline in value because the money sits there and doesn't earn interest. Right. Gold at least theoretically can go up and it will go up. So you'll be better off owning gold than owning cash in an inflationary environment. But, but the people who don't like gold, the people who like FDR would like to confiscate gold, the people who separated the dollar from the gold standard uh, will make the argument that, you know, all those rich people are parking their money in the hands of those who sell the gold, and that's cash that should be circulating in the economy. Wait a minute, what do Judge. you say to oh, that? Hold on, wait a minute. Miners have jobs when the price of gold goes up. People that more... take the gold out of the earth. Yes, those people have gold. People who transport, people who process, people who sell gold. It's more jobs. What, what are they talking about? And if you're worried about that, Judge, buy silver. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So obviously, this is not the equivalent of putting cash in a shoebox. This is the no. equivalent of switching where your cash is going to go from some consumable to this hard, precious commodity. Well, whatever it is, it's something that somebody has to produce. So somebody's getting jobs for, if you're buying gold. If, somebody's, right. if you put cash under your bed, nobody's getting a job. Last week, gold was at $1,200 an ounce. You're predicting 2000 Should we fear a bubble? Is gold, or stated differently, is gold bubble-proof? I don't know. It will end in a bubble. Someday there will be a huge bubble. Someday, every, you walk down the street in New York or Minneapolis, anywhere, people will be buying gold all over the place. Then you sell. It will, be, it will end in a bubble. They always do. Is silver a good buy today? I'd rather buy silver than gold. I own both. Okay. Gold is at all-time highs. Silver is 60% below its all-time highs. So I'd, I'd rather buy silver, but I own both. All right. Uh, switching gears, free trade. The government doesn't want us to be able to buy inexpensive goods from, let's say, for example, you know what I'm going to say, China. Now, isn't it desirable? Don't I really want to trade an hour of my wealth for as many hours of goods and services as I can get? Why would I buy a pencil for a dollar if I could buy four for a dollar from China? Of course. I mean, it's, it's, free trade has been demonstrated millions of times to be good for everybody. Nobody's ever won a trade war, Judge. Nobody has ever won a trade war in history. It's better to be able to buy... The people who can produce suits cheaper than other people, you should buy suits from them. What would you say to the Paul Krugmans of the world to say, oh, you're going to put Americans out of work. You're going to ship those jobs overseas. I would say he should resign. He doesn't know anything about economics. He's an idiot. I, what do you mean what I said? I wouldn't bother talking to him. But, but first, what first would you what, say about his okay, argument? Okay, all right, look, okay, if we can buy four suits instead of one suit or four pencils instead of one, then we have money to spend on other things, which we can spend here in America on American goods and American right. services, American anything. Right. You have more money to spend on other things. Is the president so blinded by ideology that he doesn't understand economics 101? 
I don't know why he doesn't understand economics 101, but the, remember the man six years ago was a community organizer. He doesn't know anything about economics. He barely knows much about the world. He, he has very little experience in anything. Why won't he take note of what's happening to gold and say, I must be doing something wrong with cash? Because the people who vote for him have, are saying the other thing. I don't even know if he knows that gold is 13. You know it's the 1300. I know it's the 13. I doubt if he knows. And even if he does, the people he listens to don't want to tell him. Jim Rogers, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Speaking of gold and silver, here's something coin related that you have a right to know about the Constitution. The Constitution says the federal government has the right to coin money and to regulate its value. It doesn't permit the federal government to print money. The founders knew the dangers of printing as much money of any arbitrary value as the government wished, and so they prohibited it. The Coinage Act of 1792, one of the very first laws Congress enacted, created the U.S. Mint, and it produced gold and silver coins, not paper money. The amount of gold and silver in each coin was carefully monitored. Indeed, the Coinage Act specified, are you ready for this, the death penalty for anyone in the government who by fraud or embezzlement debased the value of these metal coins. Today, money is paper and it's worthless, thanks to the Federal Reserve. I wonder how today's Federal Reserve Board would behave if it faced a similar restraint on its ability to decrease the value of a dollar. Oh, it would be a different and far more prosperous world.